Hello, oh, this video I will discuss the German high command during the uh, beginning of the German invasion of Poland in September 1939. So first, uh, we have the OKW, the Oberherrskommando, uh, the Wehrmacht, and this is the, the high command of the entire German armed forces. So it controls um, every single part of the military. And the chief of this, um, in September 1939, is Wilhelm Keidel, and his chief of staff is Alfred Jodl. And then underneath, you have three branches of the military. The Army, the OKH, the uh, Air Force, the OKL, and the Navy, the OKM, is the headquarters. So, um, I'll discuss a little bit of how this came to be. So... 1938 was a big year for German high command uh, because of something known as the Blomberg Fritsch affair. Now, um, Werner um, von uh, Blomberg was the Reich Minister of War, which is equivalent to what would become the commander in chief of the OKW. And then Werner von Fritsch was in command of the army. Um, he was a chief of the here, and both of those uh, men would be kicked out of their positions in this um, affair, and it was actually a made-up affair, made up by people like Himmler and Goring, who despised both Blomberg and Fritsch, and they devised a plan in order to, um, to frame both of them for uh, deeds which they have not committed. Uh, Blomberg, uh, the Reich Minister of War, um, remarried um, and got married to a woman. And uh, there um, became rumors instigated by Himmler and Goring, false rumors that uh, Blomberg's uh, new wife was a former prostitute. Um, and essentially, this caused a big scandal. Um, because the German public turned against him. And at the exact same time were false allegations of Werner von Fritsch being homosexual, which was untrue. But homosexuality was uh, strongly uh, despised in Nazi Germany. And thus both of these men were forced to resign their positions. Um, and Ludwig von Beck um, was also replaced. And in their place... Um, you had Wilhelm Keitel in charge of the OKW, and his chief of staff was Alfred Jodl, and the OKH, uh, which was, of course, supposed to be subordinate to the OKW, but eventually ended up um, working side by side and completely separately from the OKW. Uh, the, the new commander chief was Walter von Brauchitsch, and his chief of staff was Franz Halder, and these would all these four would all become very important players in the Second World War. So I'll discuss more in detail about the OKH. So as I said, Walter von Brauchitsch and Franz Holder are respectively the uh, the commander in chief and the chief of staff of, of the Reichsheer. And then this force was divided into three groups, namely Army Group North, Army Group South, and Army Group C. Army Group North was positioned in the northern part of the German-Polish border, and Army Group South, uh, commanded by von Rundstedt, was guarding the more southern area. And Wilhelm von Lieb covered the German border with France and Belgium and Luxembourg on the, on the Westfall. Um, and uh, they all had um, armies under command. Uh, von Balk had the third and fourth armies. Uh, Gern von Rundstedt had the 8th, 10th, and 14th Army, and Wilhelm von Liebs, uh Army Group C had the 5th Army, the 1st Army, and the 7th Army under his command. The Air Force was also organized into four different groups, uh, and these were known as Luftflotte, and the flag that you see in the middle is the flag of a Luftflotte commander. Uh, and there were four of them, Albert Kesselring, and Alexander Lohr were in charge of Luftflotte uh, Luftflot 1 and Luftflotte 4, respectively, which were 
in charge of operations in northern Poland with Army Group North and southern Poland with Army Group South, respectively. And Luftflot 2 and Luftflot 3, uh, commanded by, uh, by Helmut Fenli, Felmi, and Hugo Sperle, were um, in charge of defending the west of Germany uh, against potential French or British bombings of the Ruhr and other important areas in western Germany. And the biggest player in the OKL was its commander-in-chief, Hermann Göring, and he is often regarded as the second, if not third, most powerful person in the country. Uh, because he is in charge of the Air Force, but not only that, he's a very close friend of Hitler, and Goring um, is also technically the Reich's Minister of Prussia, um, which in effect is, um, by 1939, is a meaningless role, but before then, it was a very powerful role, because this meant that Goring um, was in charge of very many affairs, going on in the Kingdom of Prussia. And his chief of staff was a man named Hans Jezunek. And he would be an important player in Luftwaffe, in Luftwaffe affairs in the coming years. The Navy uh, really had one big, big player. His name was Gross Admiral Erich Raider. And Raider was the commander-in-chief of the OKM, the Oberstkommando this uh, marine, and he was in charge of the Kriegsmarine. Uh, this force in during the German invasion of Poland was split into three main groups. One was directly under the SKL, which was basically all of the ships um, in uh, the Atlantic, um, all the ships going on commerce raids, um, and basically all of the extra ships that were not in port and there were two groups of ships that would be in port or at least near port and one of them was marine group west uh and marine group west was basically all of those ships in the west german ports so that being hamburg uh cookshaven Wilhelmshaven, uh and then marine group ost was of those forces in the eastern ports like Rostock uh, and Konigsberg and included uh, the famous Schleswig-Holstein which was the one bombarding uh, the Westerplatte Peninsula. So we discussed all three branches of the German military and all of them were supposed to be uh, at least in theory, subordinate and reporting to the the Wehrmacht High Command, the OKW, um, with Wilhelm Keitel. However, in charge of the uh, the armed forces and above them is, of course, the Führer Adolf Hitler. And he puts himself in this position as higher than any other uh, part of the armed forces. And he wants to make sure that the army is, first of all, loyal to him, and second of all, that no one can try to challenge him. So this would be very important, uh, especially later in the war, but even beginning of the war, Hitler would make sure that uh, all of the armed forces are completely loyal to his regime and not become an independent entity. So that is the organization of uh, of the German high command of the military during September 1939. And if there's any requests for the video, I may make one about the British high command or the French high command during the exact same time. And later, maybe even one about the Soviet high command. But as for now, um, I think that's the end of the video. So thank you for watching. And...